Welcome to The Piano Forever. My name is James Pavel Chakras, and in today's video, I'm here at Studio B at Milan Recording Studios with an interesting little instrument. Now, I've already talked about an instrument kind of like this on the channel before, which is my Silvio Soprani accordion, but this is a smaller variety of accordion known as a concertina, and these have been popular for many, many years at this point, and they're pretty well known in pop culture. I thought it would be kind of cool to get one of these and make a video about it, whether or not it's possible to buy a cheap music instrument, get to know how to play it, and have some fun with it, because I think out of all the musical instruments, this I think is one of the most quirky and one of the most fun looking. Um, so I bought this for under $200 online. It was very lightly used. Uh, the owner says that it only had around two hours of play time, which is like nothing at all. And in physical condition, it's perfect. It looks brand new. So I expected it, I, that I would have no problems with it. However, there appears to be some sort of a relatively minor, but at the same time serious flaw with this instrument, so I wanted to kind of expand on the original video idea that I had about buying a cheap instrument and having fun with it. Now it's become buying a cheap instrument, repairing it, and then hopefully having fun with it. And I say repairing it because I think the fix should be simple. I don't know exactly what's wrong with it, but I think I have an idea. So first I wanted to tell you a little bit more about this, and then I'll tell you about the problem. So first of all, the concertina is a, like I said, it's a type of accordion, and it's basically a lot like most other accordions. You've got two sets of buttons on one end, and then another row of buttons on the other side, so it's got a total of 20 buttons. You expand and contract the instrument, which sucks in air and pulls air out. It flows over metal reeds, and this creates the sound. When you push down a button, it opens up basically a tube and allows air to flow over a certain set of reeds. However, it seems like there's a, a few buttons that are stuck, and there's a few reeds that are singing even when they aren't supposed to, so that is the problem. Now, I don't think this got damaged in shipping. First of all, like I said, physically it's fine. If we take a look at the box here, you'll also see that it was packaged really well. Let's go check that out. So this is how we received the concertina package. It's got all of the, you know, these air bubble packet things inside of it. And it's got this cute little hexagon-shaped case here. And if we open this up, and it's kind of padded, it's not like super, super protective, but you know, you could drop this and it wouldn't damage the instrument too much. So, if we open this up here, you'll see the inside of the case. There's the cool little concertina. Let me take it out. There's the instrument itself. Visually, it's in great condition. And then, at the bottom of this, there's a little package as well. It's got a microfiber cleaning cloth and a couple of things, a little guide showing what notes the buttons belong to, as well as a little thing here that appears to be quite old. As a matter of fact, it's a limited warranty and how to care for it and a registration card. So that's everything that came in the box and it was all packaged quite well. So I don't feel like it got damaged in shipping. So as you can see, this little concertina was packaged very well. It was in that cute hexagonal case, and it was put inside of that well-protected box. So I doubt what happened to it happened in shipping. So I'm not exactly sure what was going on. Part of me almost feels like this may be an inherent issue with these instruments. I could be wrong on that. Maybe it's not. Um, but part of me kind of wonders if it is. After all, it is made in China for like 300 bucks brand new, and quality control can't be extremely high on an instrument that is that low price. Um, if it was, you know, $1,500 and hand-built in Germany, it would be flawless, but that's not... Very few people would buy it for that price. So as a result, it's not that way. Now let me unbuckle it here and show you what the problem is. Now, <clears throat> I am, to be fair, I am not experienced with concertinas, but I do believe that I understand how they work because I have a few other instruments in the studio that operate on the same principles, again, with air flowing over reeds. Reed organs, for example, I have two of them at Milan Recording Studios, and both of them operate in the same way. If you pump the pedals and you don't push any keys, you won't hear any sound until you pull out a stop and push a key then you will hear noise as that key, as that, um, that reed it has air flowing over it. The accordion that I have, the Silvio Soprani, is the same way. If I open and close the bellows, you'll just hear the sound of air moving until I push a chord button or press a key. This is different, and I don't think it's supposed to work in this way. I'm pretty sure if you open and expand this instrument without pushing any keys, buttons, nothing should happen. But in this case, 
we've got some keys making noise, and I believe there's two sticky keys um, right now. They're on this end, and um, I believe it's two, because as you can hear, it's an interval. Each one of these buttons does control two notes, but only one at a time. One pitch when you're expanding the instrument, and the other pitch when you contract the instrument. And it sounds like there may be three here as well. I'm hearing a very high partial as I'm contracting the instrument. Listen carefully. So I think there might be three sticky keys. The other one's probably on this side. Um, so we're going to have to take a look here and see what exactly is wrong with it. Um, when I push the buttons down, I can actually see inside these little vents here, I can see levers moving, even for the keys I believe are sticking. Um, so I'm not exactly sure what the problem here is, but I think now it's time to take it to the workbench, to the workshop, and take it apart and see what happens. So here we are at the workshop at Milan Recording Studios. It's up on our little workbench, which is padded with a furniture blanket, as you can see, to keep things nice and safe. So this is a side view of the concertina. You can see the nice little strap here. If you unbuckle this, there's one on the other side too. That allows it to be free to expand and contract. And then if I rotate it around to this side, you can see the Honer logo here. You can see it's hexagon shaped and you can see a little better view of the rows of buttons. This one here is an air valve. You push this down and it simply allows air to flow even more freely through the instrument so you can close it down without straining anything. On the other side though, I think is where we're having some of the problems. There could be a button on this side as well that's stuck because I think I'm hearing a really high pitched note, but this button is lower than the other ones. It's kind of at a slight angle and it has a different feel. These other ones are all nice and light. This one's a little more sticky feeling and it doesn't come back up as much. See, that's the way it should be, but when I push it down, it doesn't come back all the way. So I think this is one of our keys that's sticking and this one here, kind of does the same thing. It feels like all the other ones, but I'm also pretty sure that this one might be one of the notes that we're hearing playing as well. Once again, just to demonstrate what's happening earlier, if I unbuckle these and expand it and contract it, it's making noise without me pushing in any buttons, which I don't think is what it's supposed to do. So what I'm going to do is buckle this back up and take it apart off camera. I think to take it apart, it should be pretty simple. I think all I'm gonna have to do is remove these six screws here, one for each side of the hexagon, and then the front part should just lift right off. And then I should be able to get in here, access the reeds, see the mechanisms, and hopefully even still move the instrument and operate it with this faceplate missing to see what's wrong. Let's do that. So I've taken out the six screws that held on the end cap and unfortunately it wasn't just this little wooden piece that came off. The entire reed assembly actually came out. These here are the six screws that came out. As you can see, they're a lot longer than I expected them to be because uh, they went through this whole entire wooden assembly and then they screwed into the wood back here. So I think what I have to do next is actually remove, I guess it's these two screws here to be able to take the reed assembly out. But before I do that, I wanted to just show you guys the reed assembly itself. You can kind of get a little look at, I think if I turn it like this, you can see it. You can see the reeds here. They're kind of all different shapes and sizes. These um, reeds here are kind of made of like a fabric. This reed here is more of like a plasticky of paper thin material. And this one here is just metal. And so I believe these are different pitches and so the different sizes and different materials of reeds create a different pitch and a different tone. So these are the reeds here, and if I flip it over, you'll see that there are, in fact, more reeds. But what I really wanted to do was expose the button mechanism over here, because that's really what I wanted to get at. So now I'm going to take out these two tiny little screws, and we'll see if that has the desired effect. So I was correct. Fortunately, the disassembly process in this was basically brain dead simple. All I did was take these two little screws out. You can see the holes where they used to be. And then the end cap part came off. So this is the, the little uh, veneered end cap thing. And you can see here that this is the inside of it. You've got that little cloth here that's just glued over the vent. And this is the button mechanism, which is also really quite simple. You just push the button down and that little pad comes up, which opens up the hole, which allows air to flow over the reeds. Now, I think 
think I know what is wrong with it. I think I have found the issue. And there's actually, if I'm correct, there appears to be a significant but also easily fixable design flaw with this instrument. So what I think I'm going to do next is try to analyze this and isolate the problem. And what I'm going to do is install this back onto the concertina without this on. And that should work. I've set it on top and opened and closed it, and it still allows notes to play. So that should give us a relatively airtight seal and allow us to diagnose the problem. And if I am correct, I'm also going to do the same for the other end here. If I remove this for a second and just show you the inside here, you can see what the inside of it looks like there. And uh, we've got another set of reeds on the other side, and we should have an identical set of buttons and button mechanism over here. And what I'm going to do is take that out as well and diagnose the same issue. So let's do that. All right, so I did what I said it was going to do. I took off these end caps and just put the read and key mechanisms back on without these end caps being on. Now, there were a couple of additional steps I had to do. Well, really just one additional step that I wasn't actually expecting on having to do. Looking back on it, it makes total sense. Why two screws would create an airtight seal, I don't know, um, but that's what I was thinking. So what I had to do was put um, this cloth electrician's tape all around the edge of the, um, the thing here. Normally the end cap creates an airtight seal with the six screws that are on it, but since I didn't put that on, I needed this tape to create an airtight seal. Is it 100% perfect? Yeah, probably not, but it works just as good as ever in my opinion, and I think it does a great job. So I did that on both sides here so that I'm able to isolate the buttons from the end caps. And now, if I unbuckle it here, swing these out of the way and do the same on the other side. Now, if I open and close it without pushing any buttons, what was happening before was it was making sound. Now, if I do that and I make sure not to hit any buttons on accident, you can hear that it is making no sound. That is how it is supposed to work. This button over here, by the way, is just an air valve where you push that open and it allows air to flow freely in and out of the instrument. So what exactly is wrong here? Well, there's a few different issues uh, and a couple of different design flaws. First of all, the mechanism that these are using isn't the greatest. It's very, very simple and quite easy to construct. But these um, buttons in the back, they have a bar that goes over the first pivot point for the uh, row of buttons that's closer. For a couple of these buttons, um, the pivot bar for the first row of buttons was too high, and that was causing these back buttons to actually hover above their holes, just a little bit like that. Hopefully you can see that. So that was creating a little bit of noise. Also, some of these, like this one here, uh, is still, we've put some oil on it, which is this stuff here. Uh, and for, at first it was very nice and smooth, and now it's kind of worn off. It's not as, um, it's not as smoothly moving as it normally is. So what I think I can do is I can probably widen up the little, um, there's like a little joint here. So there's two bands of metal that fold over the pivoting bar. And if I widen those up just a tiny, tiny bit, that'll probably reduce some tension on that and fix that issue. But this was another one of the uh, keys that was sticking for me. And uh, when I push it down, it would just kind of stick something like that and stay open. So that was part of our problem. Now to demonstrate that it's working correctly, what I'm going to do is run through and push each and every button and just play each note for it on here and just show you guys that it is in fact working properly. Then on the other side, which is the lower notes. This, this one seems kind of weak when I push it in. Not sure why that is. Maybe the reed needs to be adjusted. So as you can see, aside from that one week, one week read that I'll take a look at in a little bit here and maybe see if I can diagnose, it is working perfectly fine. So what was the problem? Well, aside from the issues with the button mechanisms being a little bit faulty, the main issue, I think, comes from a combination of that and the fact that I'm thinking these holes were a little bit too tight. And what happens is if you watch these buttons, when they get pushed down, a lot of the times, the buttons actually tilt, as you can see. So when you push the key down, the button actually wants to bend back that way, which makes a lot of sense. What Honer has done here is they've put a little rubber buffer down here at the bottom to allow the button to tilt. But 
the inside of these holes is very rough and there's a lot of friction because they're not polished or anything. They're just drilled out and then set on top of here. So I think it's kind of a combination of somewhat sticky mechanisms for some of the notes. The rubber is a little bit too stiff, I think, on the bottom here, so it takes a lot of force to actually bend it like it's supposed to be bent. And then that comboed with the rough interior of these holes creates a lot of friction, and that allows for buttons to easily be stuck and get hung up on things. Um, I think that's why it only had about two hours of playtime, because no matter what the original owner did, they couldn't get it to sound nice at all. And when you've got two keys stuck down, you really can't make it sound good at all. So I think that is the diagnosis of the problem. How exactly to fix it, for me, I know what to do, but I'm not sure I want to do it. I could try to smooth out the inside of these holes with a, dr uh, with a file, like this file that I have here. I could put that in there and try to smooth those out. Maybe put some wax or some other sort of lubricant in there to make the, to create less resistance here. Uh, the other option would be to drill out these holes and make them longer or make them oval shaped so that these have a bit more play. I don't want to do that because I don't think that would look very good. I think it would look ugly as heck actually. Uh, but that is another option that you could do. Um, so that is the Honer Concertina. That is the diagnosis of the problem and that is what's wrong. So I think probably what I'm going to do next is maybe try to put it together and just see what happens. Um, probably going to try to fix these holes somehow or maybe I won't. Maybe I'll return it. I'm not exactly sure what I will do, but that's been the diagnosis of the problem. So if you do buy one of these, or if you have one of these for yourself, I wouldn't be surprised if it does have the same exact problem. Um, these are definitely not the highest quality instruments, and uh, honestly, as much as I like concertinas, I'm not going to dismiss them as an instrument as a whole. I think they're really cool, uh, but these particular Honer ones, I can't really recommend them. So I figured I'd end off this video right where I started it, back at Studio B here at Milan Recording Studios. and. Of course, I've got the concertina here. So I think there's a few questions that I want to ask and then answer before I move on with this video. Question one, is it fixed? Question two, if the answer to that is no, can it be fixed? Question three, is it worth fixing this instrument? Question four, is it even an instrument? And question five, should you buy one? The answer to question one, is it fixed? No. We're back to square one. I actually had it fixed it, for the most part. Uh, I could open and close the bellows without it making noise. Then um, I was playing with it off camera and now it's doing the same thing again. Um, so the question is, no, it is not fixed. The answer to question two, can it be fixed? Yes, it can be fixed. You have to enlarge these holes and make them very large and very ugly. And I don't want an ugly concertina. Um, so yes, it can be fixed. Is it worth fixing it? Uh, not really. It's not even that high quality of an instrument anyway, so even if you did fix it, you'd st I think you'd still probably be limited. And the amount of what you can do to fix it, I think, would be a little bit less rewarding than if you had a higher quality instrument that needed a little bit of maintenance that you fixed. Then you had a higher quality concertina. Um, the answer to question, what was it, four? Is it even an instrument? Uh, barely. I'd say more of it. It's like a $300 toy. Uh, I entered this video in a very positive light and in a very good mood because I thought it would be a very easy fix. I didn't expect it to be a serious design flaw and I also wasn't expecting it to be that cheap. Uh, it's made very, very, very cheaply. The quality control is very, very, very poor and uh, I'm, I'm really bummed as you can tell. And um, I really wanted to like it. I still like concertinas as a whole. I think they're a really cool, cute, quirky instrument like I did before. Um, but these particular Honer models, I I don't know the model of this one, but these Honer concertinas, I'd probably avoid Honer as a brand itself from now on. I'm sure they make some good stuff, but I've had such a poor experience with them straight out of the start here that I probably want to avoid them as a brand forever now. And the answer to the last question, should you buy one? I mean, you can if you want to. I'm not, I'm not saying that you shouldn't, but I don't think you should. I don't think you should. If you want to, go ahead, but I don't recommend it. I, 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 I really don't. It's, it's not a high quality instrument. It doesn't sound very good. I'll goof around with it a little bit here so you can hear how it sounds. And uh, as you can see, oh, it's lovely. It's really fantastic. That's the sound of the angels. Um, again, I like concertinas. I think they're cool, but these Honer ones just aren't very high quality and uh, I spent way too long trying to fix this and uh, I'm disappointed with the results because it was it's not fixed, sadly. So 
With that, I think that's just about the end of this video. That has been my review of this particular Honer concertinas. I'm sure there's nice concertinas out there. I've seen some really amazing videos of some incredible concertinas. Um, there seems to be quite a following of them in Ireland, and there's some amazing Irish players who do some incredible things with them. Um, but you're not going to be able to do those incredible things with this concertina. Um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this review of this instrument or this thing. Again, it's hardly an instrument. It's more of a, a toy. Um, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video and it was entertaining. If you did enjoy this video, you might want to go check out my channel of The Piano Forever and just take a look there. I typically do reviews of pianos and other keyboard type instruments, but it's always fun to branch out and try something new that I've never tried before. If you have any ideas for some interesting possibly affordable, unusual instruments like this that might actually be good, um, let me know down in the comments section below. There's a few other interesting things I would like to try out as well um, and see how good those are. So if you have any suggestions of your own, do let me know. And if you're interested in learning more about Milan Recording Studios, you might want to go subscribe to my second channel titled Milan Recording Studios. The link for that will be in the description. If any of that sounds cool, you might want to go ahead and check out my channels. And if you do that, thank you very much, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.